Okay, um, hello everyone. All right, so we are talking about using the input function to accept in data from the user, right? So, so far, you know, what we've done with the int function and the float function is basically, what, the, what we've done first of all is we've accepted the input from the user as a string. And then we've gone a step further to use either the int function or the float function to convert that input to a number. We've done it in two steps. But in this video, I wanted to talk about what's called nested functions. Okay, we're going to have a first look at it. But when we talk about um, functions, we're going to even see it more, right? But let's, let me just show you how nested functions work. We don't have to do what, what I talked about in two steps. We can do it all in one step, and this is how it works. We know if, if we, want to, we want to display something to the user, we want to ask the user to type in something, we use the input function this way, right? And we say, please, okay, let's say, please enter your age. And we know an age is we're expecting an int, right? So we would have to first of all, you know, convert that, that input to a string. All right, so the input function is going to create, let's have a colon and a space. We know the input function is going to create some kind of space or some kind of text box uh, and allow the user to type in something. And whatever the user types is going to be returned or sent back to us. It's going to return back to us as a string, even if the user types in a number. In this case, the user is going to type in a number. We know that. So it's going to return that as a string, whatever the user has typed. So I'm going to create a variable to store that. I'm going to create a variable. I'm going to call it user input string. Oops, sorry, my typing is not good. Why am I calling it user input string? Because I know that it's a user's input and it's in the form of a string. You can call it anything you want, but I like to call it that, right? Because it's a user's input, but it's coming as a string. But I know I want this as an as a number. If I wanted to, let's say, do some math with it, I can. Um, I need to. I need. I need it as a number, but it still has a string. And what we've done here, right? Well, what we've done first of all is store the result here, and we've gone ahead to use the int function, right? to kind of convert what's stored in user input string. We know the int function takes in an argument, okay, this argument, and converts whatever is stored in user input string to an int and returns it. And what we've done over here is we've received the value. So I'm going to create another variable and I'm going to call it user age. All right, now user age is now going to take whatever is stored in user input string, convert it to an int. Okay, user age is going to store that because int function takes that whatever you give it, which is the in this case user input string, convert it to an int and then returns it back to us. So we are using user age to accept that. This is what we've done. We've done it in two steps, but you can do it, you can do all that in one step. So let's let me remove this and let me remove all that. Let's start from the top. We know the input function is going to display a message to the user and allow the user to type in something, right? And we know when it's done, it's going to return whatever the user has typed back to us, it's going to return it back to us as a string. We know that. So we can directly right, convert whatever it's returning to us to an int. We can directly do that because we know the input function will always take the user's input, return it back to us as a string. So we can directly wrap the int function okay, around all, okay, of the, you know, this, all of this line, all of the input line over here. What this means is this. We are calling, first of all, the input function, and we know that's going to display a message, allow the, user, allow the user to type in something. And when it's done, it's going to return whatever the user has typed to us back as a string, right? We know that. And so we are putting, okay, whatever it's returning back to us directly, we are passing that value, whatever the input function is returning to us, directly into the int function as an argument. We are passing it directly into the int function. This is the, these are the parentheses. This is the opening parentheses of the int function, and this is the closing parentheses, right? So when I move the, the cursor over this, so you can see it highlights the ending for me with the green. The ending parentheses with the green. So I'm passing whatever the input function is returning to us as a string directly as an argument into the, you know, into the int function, and the int function will take that result, that whole result, everything that's highlighted in uh, yellow. It's going to take that result of that, and then convert it to an int. Now we know that the int function also takes in whatever you give it and then con converts it to an int and then returns it back to you, right? It returns it back to us and says, okay, I'm done converting whatever you gave me to an int. So here you go, take it back. And so we need a variable to store that. 
And so I'm going to create a variable now and say user age is going to be equal to whatever the int function is taking, which is in this case, whatever the input function is returning, given back to us. So the input function takes that, takes whatever the, whatever the um, input, sorry, the int function takes whatever the input function is returning or given back to us. It takes that and then returns it back to us as a string. It converts whatever the input function is giving it to an int and returns it back to us over here as an int, right? And so directly, you know, we've done all that. We've nested the functions. We've taken one function, the int function, and then we've nested in, we've added in another function here, which is also, you know, taking an argument, right? We are putting, we are putting a function in another function as an argument. We are passing in a function as an argument, okay, in another function. This is what's called nested, you know, functions, right? We'll look, we'll look at more of them. We'll talk about more of them when we talk about functions, but this is an idea. You can do all this in one line, or you can do it in multiple lines. You can break things apart. I like to break things apart. Sometimes I, you know, I like to put things together too. So it depends, right? But this is an, another way to do it, which is efficient, you know, want everything done in one line. And then now we can go ahead and print out what's stored in user age. And it will be a number for us because user age has been converted to an int already. So when I print this out, the user types in the age, let's say 27, hit enter, it prints out 27. Because it's a number, I can add one to it directly, right? Let's, e let's even add 100, right? 100 to it. So take whatever I stored in user age, add 100 to it, and then print the result of it. So when I run this now, type in 27, 100 is going to be added to 27, and 100 plus 27 is 127, and that's going to be printed to us. So when I hit enter, 127 is going to be displayed because we know user age has been converted to a proper int, right? The same thing for a float. The input function, right, will display this message, please enter, let's say, a float. And then it's going to return whatever the user has typed back to us as a float. And so we are, sorry, sorry, I'm sorry. The input function is going to take whatever the user has typed back to us as a string. And so we are passing that string that the input function is returning to us directly as an argument into the int function. Oh, sorry. Well, that, that, that this was the int function. In this case, we are passing it into the float function, right? We talked about the float function. Right, the input function is returning whatever the user has typed, okay, as a string, and we are passing that string that the input function is returning directly as an argument into the float function, and the float function is taking that string and converting it to a float and returning it back to us, all right? And so we are using user age to accept that value that the float function is returning. And then over here, we are printing out what's stored in user age, which is a float plus 100, right? So when I this and I type in 27 27 is going to be converted okay to a float the input function is going to return 27 as a string but it's being passed into the float function so flo the float function is going to take in that 27 which is a string and then convert it to a float as 27.0 and store it in user age and then it's going you know this print function is going to take 27.0 add one uh, uh, sorry add a hundred to it and then the result is going to be 127.0 because you're adding an int to a float, you're going to get a float, right? 127, sorry, 27.0 plus 100 is 127.0. So when I hit enter over here, we are getting 127.0. Okay, so that's how to nest functions, and we'll talk more about that in the, in the future, but I just wanted you to see this, right? So if you have any questions, please comment down below, and I'll do everything to respond to them. Thank you very much for watching. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you next time with the next video. All right then, bye-bye.